Welcome back to Footballology. So this week I want to talk about the week one preseason and some news and just some notes and stuff that I've taken away from and just three stories. Um, I don't know, like they might be nothing. I mean, it's only preseason, I know, and it's only week one of preseason at that, but it's something to me like it's, I don't know, it's just interesting to me. So I really will hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's get right into it. The first story is the Denver Broncos and their quarterback situation. Now, I know they brought in Case Keenum to play the quarterback role, and they paid him some decent money and all this. And the storyline looks good as far as, like, everything goes, what he did last year in Minnesota, what he could possibly do for the Denver Broncos roster. Apparently ESPN wants to update me. Uh, and what he could do for the Denver Broncos roster. And so I don't think that's where they should go, honestly. I feel like Chad Kelly played really well against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, granted, I know it's preseason. It's week one preseason at that. And he was playing against third stringers. But i seen somewhere that he might be taking uh, second team reps. And so that's really close because I think he clearly outplayed Paxton Lynch. And I think he can actually outplay Case Keenum. And even, you know get to that point where he can possibly be questioned as a starter. I mean, if Keenum starts off rough in the first four games struggling, then here comes Chad Kelly. Uh, but no, he looked really good in his debut. And there was always questions that he, there was never a question that he had the talent when he came out in the draft last year and they took him in the seventh. Um, it was always like, I think he was Mr. Relevant, honestly. Uh, but it was always, you know, off the field stuff and everything like that. But I really think that he has opportunity not only to play well, but actually start at this level. So, I don't know. Just keep an eye out for it. Like I said, I know it's preseason. I know it's week one. I know it's way too early. And I just watch him this week if you get a chance to. Watch the Denver Broncos play this week. And watch him specifically because I think he can actually outplay Case Keenum. And I just think he, Case Keenum has way too much pressure on him. He was a guy, I mean, two or three years ago. His story, him and Nick Foles' stories are pretty much hand-in-hand, hand, which is really crazy. But what he did in Minnesota was nice. Don't get me wrong. He did really well in Minnesota. He had some quality receivers. He had a quality offense line. He had a quality run game. But I'm not sure if he's the quarterback that can actually win a game by himself, if that makes any sense. But, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this storyline. Like I said, I know it's preseason. It's too early, but I really like this one. My second storyline that I want to talk about from the week one preseason, and it's not really week one because it just happened yesterday. Uh, I was sitting here watching NFL Network, and it came across the ticker at the bottom of the screen, the 49ers signed Alfred Morris, and I lost my mind. And my friends didn't know why I lost my mind so bad. Like, for one, I'm a big Alfred Morris fan. I actually think he's pretty decent. He had a really good rookie campaign, and then he just kind of, you know, fell off. And I don't think it was his fault. I think it was just too much turmoil in Washington. Um, he, he wasn't wanted there. He goes to Dallas, and that was just a messy situation. And then now he's just bouncing around. And I don't think he's that bad of a running back. Yes, he doesn't catch the ball in the backfield, and he doesn't do what everyone else does. But he's a really good runner of the ball, and that's what you want. So anyways, I seen across the ticker, they, the 49ers picked him up, and I, re I was really, really excited. And I explained to my friend that, you know, now he's with Kyle Shanahan. The last time he was in the Shanahan system, he played really, really well. And it was just, I feel like the story just kind of went unknown. Like, I feel like he just got kind of swept under the rug. Like, oh, Alfred Morris signs with a team. And they just kind of kept going about their day. And it was just like, no, like, this is this is very impactful for the 49ers. If you're the 49ers, you should be happy. If you're a 49ers fan, you should be ecstatic. Because now, with that zone run scheme, don't get me wrong, the zone run scheme has been proven to make any running back look good. Like, we know this. I know this as a Chiefs fan. Like, it's made numerous running backs look amazing, but then there's some times where the running back is just good, and I think Alfred Morris is just good. He knows how to hit the hole. He knows how to read. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into it from the running back position, but I think Alfred Morris is a good running back. So if you're a 49ers fan, you should be ecstatic for this signing. Um, I didn't feel like Jared McKinnon was going to be your every down back. I didn't think his body would hold up through a 16-game season. And so you guys needed to bring in somebody else, and I think Matt Burita, I think he messed up his shoulder. And so, I, I don't know. I forget the whole story behind that. Like, I probably should have looked it up. But I didn't care because they picked up Alfred Morris. So, this takes a lot of pressure off of Jimmy G. 
and gives them ability to run the ball and I still give him ability to, you know, sit in the pocket and read and things like that. Like Alpha Morris is a quality running back. It's going to take a lot of pressure off Jimmy Graham, Jimmy Graham, <laughs> Jimmy Grappola, and just the whole Kyle Shanahan's offense. And you need a running back like Alpha Morris in this offense. And he knows he can run the system. We've seen him run it. So it's, it's really exciting. It was really exciting to me. This has fantasy implications all over it. So if you're Go get Alpha Morris right now. I would say I highly recommend go picking him up right now if you've already had your draft or whatever. He's definitely a must-have running back now. Last but not least, um, this storyline has nothing. This is completely 100% all me, and this is just how I feel right now. Um, I think that Tyler Bray, the Chicago uh, Bears third-string quarterback, has truly... I played Mitch Trubisky, has truly I played Chase Daniels, and has an ability to possibly start for the Chicago Bears. Now, like I've been saying, it's week one, it's preseason. I completely understand he's playing against third stringers the whole nine. But I don't think Mitch Trubisky has it. I don't think he's gonna be successful. I don't I don't think he's ready. I don't no. He can't carry a team. Uh even last year, when I know they had no offense and they were struggling, he still struggled too much, like if that makes any sense. He didn't show you that he had the, the ability, the future, the something to build around him. Now, I think a lot of people are expecting him to grow. If you haven't seen it yet, my Ben Roethlisberger, ben Roethlisberger effect, I can't really say it now. Uh, but it's all about taking young quarterbacks or just copycat league and things like that. So what people are expecting for Mitch Trubisky is to be Jared Goff in year two, like Jared Goff did. But Jared Goff, even his rookie, when he had played those little game, those couple of games, he showed that he might have some flashes. The talent wasn't there. The offensive line wasn't played there. It was it was questions, right? And all he had was TG. They go out and they bring in. They didn't bring in. Like think about the weapons that the Rams did bring in last year for Jared Goff. Uh, the biggest one was obviously Andrew Whitworth, uh, the left tackle. And then, you know, he still had Todd Gurley there. So we knew what he, that could do. But Robert Woods was a number two receiver, three at best in Buffalo. So you shouldn't expect it much from him. But he still got off with Jared Goff. Uh, Sammy Watkins was a hit and miss, kind of played here and there sparingly. But, you know, he still did a little bit of work. And then Cooper Cup, a third round pick. So realistically, when the Rams went out and they addressed the needs at the wide receiver position for Jared Goff, they didn't go trade for Julio Jones. They didn't go make a move for Antonio Brown. Shit, they didn't even go make a trade for Le'Veon Bell. Or I mean, technically, they didn't Le'Veon Bell. Sorry, that was stupid of me. But like, they didn't do. They didn't bring in a free agent acquisition to the point where you were like, "Oh wow, that's a really big upgrade." Like, no. They brought in some guys that were role players elsewhere and expecting them to all come together. But the one person that tied it together was Jared Goff. And no one's talking about this. Like, Jared Goff is really decent. Like, he's a good quarterback. All he needed was some a little bit of protection, which they addressed in the guy for him. And some guys that can possibly catch the ball a couple of times. That's it. Like, I felt like that even if they would have kept a same receiving core, the Whitworth move had the biggest impact on Jared Goff's year more than anything. So now you fast forward to this year with, you know, the Chicago Bears. First, you got Kevin White, which is a first round pick. And you got to expect something from him. Like you, you really hope that he gets something. Um, and then you got Allen Robinson, which I think is a huge free agent acquisition because I think the dude's still a quality number one receiver. And then you still got, you know, Tariq Cohen and uh, Jordan Howard. So realistically, you plug in a quarterback. You should you should expect not greatness. I'm, I'm not gonna, that's a huge word, but you should expect quality year from him. I mean, I mean anywhere from 3,500 to 4,500 yards, uh, 30 to 35 touchdowns somewhere around there. I mean, obviously interceptions are going to still be somewhat high because he's a young quarterback. But I still feel like Trubisky is struggling to take that next step. So right there, like I just explained everything to you right there. I don't think Trubisky is going to be the guy for Chicago for long uh i was watching a press conference or a post game uh interview i think it was like a interview he had matt Nagy had at uh, the bears camp and i was watching it and he was talking about trubisky and when you watch coaches like i've always like i pay attention to this when you watch some coaches talk about some guys they have a certain smile like they try not to be happy about it but they're like oh yeah you know he's a good guy 
but they have a certain demeanor about it. Like they know who they have at quarterback is 100% their guy and they're 100% ready to go. Unfortunately, I feel like Matt Nagy doesn't like, not doesn't like Trubisky, but doesn't feel it with Trubisky, but he's obligated to play him because he's the number two overall pick. Now, I guarantee you, if Trubisky was shit, if he was a late first round pick, we wouldn't be having this conversation. It would be a quarterback competition in Chicago. But the fact that Trubisky was number two overall and he went that high, there's obligation there. We've seen this before with the quarterback position. When a guy goes that high or is a highly talented free agent, it's automatically like he gets the starting role. And that shouldn't be the case. But that's what's happening in Chicago, in my opinion. Like I said, there's nothing here. I know there isn't. But this is just what I've, like, noted and just paid attention, just jotting down little notes. Um, And then Chase Daniels had so many batted balls in the first two games of the Chicago Bears preseason. It just proves to you that not every short quarterback can be Russell Wilson or Drew Brees. Those guys are very special at what they do, and they understand the game, and they know how to play the game from their height. Like, that's plain and simple. And not everyone can play from that height. And Chase Daniels is showing you that short quarterbacks are really hard to find they can have success at this level. And then comes Tyler Bray. Now, I know he throw, he, he had one pass. Now, I don't feel like it was his fault, but it was an interception. He, he threw it. The guy just, the corner had, you know, good coverage. And the receiver just kind of had the outside. And Tyler Bray kind of hit the ball on the inside. And the corner just made a better play. I understand that. But I don't feel like it was his fault. I feel like if he had Allen Robinson or even Kevin White out there, they would have played the ball differently versus what his receiver did. I just, I, like I said, this is all me. This is completely 100% my story, my news. And I really feel like Tyler Bray could possibly be the number two quarterback and then potentially become the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears at one point this year. I just don't know if Trubisky has it. Chase Daniels is a proven backup quarterback, which nothing, I mean, guys make quality career. Chase Daniels is getting paid just being a backup quarterback. Dude never sees the field unless it's week 17 and his team is locked into the playoffs. I know. And so that's it. Like that, that, so I feel like that's where it's at. I feel like there's a real quarterback competition here that no one's talking about between Trubisky and Bray. Matt Nagy likes Bray. I know he does. Bray knows the system. So watch that. That's something else to watch for week, uh, I guess technically it'll be their third game, but week two of the preseason for the Chicago Bears. So uh, that's all I have for you guys this week. I might put out another video this week. I'm not sure just yet, but um, I need to do a running back fantasy football video. That, that needs to come up. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting to see a couple more things. But uh, that's all I have for you guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, a lot of this news is no news, but it's my news. And I really like these stories. I really do. And I felt like I had to make a video on it before anything blew up because I just want to say I did. I, I told you so. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not a footballologist yet, go on and subscribe to the YouTube channel today. Become a footballologist and stay safe, football fans.